Good morning. It's 9 o'clock on this Saturday, March 30th. Happy Saturday. Happy Easter weekend. I know a lot of people in San Antonio spending time outside TIFF. Yeah. If you're not from San Antonio, you're not familiar. So San Antonio has this big tradition of camping out overnight in our city parks. They lift the curfew just for Easter weekend. And I know Brackenridge Park, Sarah, is the hot spot place to oh, be. Oh, yeah, at. it really is. Now, it is humid outside for any kind of campers or even just people enjoying the weekend. In fact, we've got some areas of mist. Take a look at how quickly clouds moved in. This is a look at last night, right around 7 o'clock. Clouds quickly move in by 11 o'clock. It is totally overcast, and those clouds have stuck around all morning. In fact, there are some areas of mist this morning outside. It mainly on the northeast side of Bear County and into Comal County as well. So as we look at temperatures, it's 65 degrees at the airport, generally in the mid 60s all around San Antonio. And this is the area of mist right now. Mist is too fine to see on the authority radar, but you can see right along 281, 1604 north into Comal and Kendall County. Those are the areas with the most prominent mist. Sprinkles could be occurring elsewhere, though. And as we look at Easter weekend this weekend, 82 degrees today will be gradually clearing tomorrow morning. The mist will be a little bit more prominent for early Easter morning. So keep that in mind. If you have plans, there will be some areas of mist tomorrow. 85 though for the high because skies will clear. We'll see some sun in the afternoon peaks of sunshine and it'll be humid and breezy tomorrow for your Easter warmer than average. But during the week ahead, we will have some cold mornings. I'll have those details in a few minutes. Sarah Tiffany. Thank you, Sarah. A man is dead after someone shot him in Converse Friday. This morning, police are still searching for the person responsible. It happened on Metal Hill, not far from Topperwine and Loop 1604. Converse police say the man in his 20s was working on a parked car in the street when someone wearing a mask shot him several times and ran away. The victim was rushed to the hospital where he later died. This morning, neighbors of a man who is believed to have shot his wife before killing himself say he openly shared they were having marital problems. San Antonio police found 52-year-old Miguel Soceda dead and his 51-year-old wife wounded inside their home on Champlain Drive. That's near Nacogdoches. This happened on Thursday night. Police tell us the couple's children were able to escape the home and were able to call for help. Neighbors say the husband recently seen trouble. My boyfriend went over there and talked to him into see if everything was okay, and he was talking to him about the divorce. So court records show Miguel Saceda filed for divorce in October. Police are calling the shooting an attempted murder suicide. We want to take a moment to remind you that if you or someone you know is dealing with domestic violence, there is help out there. So go ahead and take out your phone, scan this QR code on your screen, and it'll take you to a list of resources. The truck driver in that deadly crash with a school bus in Bastrop County has been charged. According to Bastrop County court documents, Jerry Hernandez is charged with criminally neg negligent homicide. Police say he admitted to using cocaine the morning of the crash and smoking marijuana the night before. Hernandez is accused of veering into the school bus lane that was carrying 44 pre-K students and 11 adults. They were returning from a field trip at the zoo. Two people died, including a five-year-old. A school district spokesperson says the school bus did not have seat belts. A couple is warning the community to double and triple check prescription medications after you pick them up at a drugstore. So two parents tell KSAT they caught a dosage error before giving it to their baby girl. So Lainey Chastain was prescribed medication as her mother was getting ready to give her her first treatment. She noticed the dosage seemed too high. Double checking with her husband, who has a background as a registered nurse, they realized the pharmacist had given them the wrong dosage instructions. My stomach just dropped as soon as I, he called the pharmacy and uh, asked them to verify. And they told uh, him their, their first reaction before they said anything was, have you given her this medication? And we were like, no, we, we wanted to check first. And they were very grateful because you could just hear the panic in the woman's voice that it could have been lethal had she taken the, that much at one time. KSAT did reach out to the pharmacy for a statement. Right now, we are not naming the pharmacy because it's not clear where this breakdown happened and who's actually responsible for the mistake. However, this kind of error can happen at any drugstore, so please be careful. 
very scary situation now. As some districts in San Antonio close schools, others are building new campuses. East Central ISD welcomed more students this year than they originally projected. A new study presented to the school board this week shows the growth is expected to continue over the next 10 years. The district says having these studies is crucial in helping them understand where the growth will be in the district so they can plan accordingly. Currently, we have over 11,000 students uh, um, and some change. Um, and so um, just at the high school alone, we're a 6A high school. We have over 3,500 students at our high school. We only have one. Um, and then we have seven elementary schools currently. With the bond 2022 that passed, we are going to build uh, two elementaries and another middle school to help alleviate uh, the population growth. Over the next 10 years, the district is projected to double their student population to 2300. Southwest ISD is also seeing similar student enrollment and housing growth. It's Easter weekend and lots of families will be camping out at city parks we talked about earlier. It's a San Antonio tradition like no other. The city lifted the curfew at selected parks for the weekend. Some of those include Brackenridge, um, San S.A. San, 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 San Pedro Springs, O.P. Schna Schnabel, Woodlawn Lake and Southside Lions Park. And they're asking a few of these things of campers. So keep it clean. Leave it better than you found it, as my parents would say. Keep it, bring your own trash bags. Keep your campsite tidy. Recycling bins, they are available at the parks. And remember, no glass containers are allowed. The park curfew, it resumes at 11 p.m. on Easter Sunday. And speaking of the camping tradition, we were able to speak with one man at Brackenridge Park who's been keeping this tradition alive with his family for a long time. We've been doing this for about 40 years now, probably. Now we have our grandkids and everybody coming out, so they hopefully one day will keep on the family tradition, yeah. So if you and your family would like to enjoy the Easter weekend at a restaurant, several spots are having brunches, buffets, treats, and family-style meals to celebrate. The Holiday Bakery Lorraine, Durego's Landres, and Springhouse Cafe are just some of the spots around town offering specials. For the full list, including takeout options, just head to our website, kset.com. And as you start your Easter weekend celebration, San Antonio Animal Care Services wants you to be mindful of your pets. Plastic Easter grass and even ribbons are choking hazards for animals, and sweet treats in a lot of Easter baskets can make pets sick. So make sure your animals also don't try to eat any Easter plants or flowers in the house. If your animal does get into something toxic, you can call ASPCA, Animal Poison Control Center, at 1-888-426-4435. Yeah, keep those Easter baskets high off, you know, maybe on counters or or in my case, on the top of the fridge for my big dogs because, you know, they, they smell treats. They smell right. chocolates and sweet things. They want to get in there. Aww. Everyone be safe out there. It's 908 and 65 degrees. And let's take a look, a live look outside. This is Woodlawn Lake. A lot of people are out there. They're getting ready. There's going to be an Easter egg hunt today, too. Looks like that guy is getting ready to fly a drone hosted by a local kids running and walking group running down a dream. We'll be back after the break to show you another live look at the event. 60. Ooh, what's happening over here? Let's, there we go. <laughs> live cam, 65 degrees at 908 this morning. You can see those clouds are kind of like you can just kind of feel that humidity hanging around. Sarah Spivey is going to have our Easter weekend forecast when we come back. Happening this morning, night campers will be camping out at local parks, celebrate Easter with their families. Yeah, right now our photographer Alexis is at Woodlawn Lake, so let's take a look. I know this is a really good time to be there. Some people look for their favorite camping spots every year. The shaded areas are always at the top of the list. Yes, or the ones that are by the ponds or the river. So park curfew lifted at 11 p.m. on Thursday, March 28th, resumes at 11 p.m on Easter Sunday, March 31st. But this is an, they're getting ready for an egg hunt uh, tiff that starts at 945 and it's hosted by the kids running and walking group running down a dream. Are they, have theirs already started? No, I think they're just getting ready. So basically what our producer is explaining to us, they get to do a little jog, little <laughs> exercise, 
while looking for Easter eggs. But I don't know about you, Tiff, when I was growing up or I'm mean, it was always like a sprint. They're like, OK, <laughs> ready, go. And like you're sprinting or the countdown, right? The countdown. Someone always cries. Someone's egg roll. falling. Yeah, do you guys ever do the egg roll? Yes. Yeah. Or like if you have two brothers like me, you're pushing and shoving, and then I end up. But I bet crying. you held your own. Yes, your eventually brothers. I did. If I had to learn the hard way. I bet you did, Sarah. <laughs> you know, I was always the last one. I was like, I didn't find any eggs. But I'd be like, Mijita, look over there. I'm like, oh, I found one. <laughs> when all fails, when all fails, cry. Yeah. Just, okay. <laughs> Good. You'll get what you want. Okay. Let's go. Spoken ahead. like a younger sister who's not a younger sister. I'm an older sister, but Sarah, but to me, you're my younger sister. Okay. Aww. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. If it wasn't backhanded. <laughs> Outside right now, we have got cloudy skies, and as you can see, there are some lowering ceilings. So the low-level clouds have uh, are fairly close to the ground. They're only about 900 feet up in the air there, uh, and we are seeing some areas of sprinkles and some mist outside, but if you look close enough, I can kind of see that the sun is trying to poke out up here. And so we are going to be looking at at least some clearing later on today, but it is a cloudy and patchy misty morning. It's 65 degrees outside right now in San Antonio, 61 in Bernie, 63 in Rio Medina, 65 in Converse. We do have some areas where visibility is lower than perfect. One of those areas is near Bernie and near Castroville. In the higher elevations, right as you get onto the Balcones escarpment, that's where most of the mist is right now. In fact, I've went ahead and outlined it here on the authority radar. The mist is too fine to be picked up by the airport, by the uh, by the radar rather. Uh, but these are the areas that are experiencing the most mist right now, just outside of 1604 along 281. So areas like Timberwood Park, Bolverde, even up toward Canyon Lake, perhaps near Garden Ridge as well, and perhaps nearer to the Stone Oak area, seeing just a fine mist in some places. That mist is going to be more prominent tomorrow morning during Easter morning. So make those plans. You won't have any major issues for Easter egg hunts tomorrow, but again, some mist could be out there. It is noticeably humid apart from the mist because we've got that area of high pressure to our east. That's directing our winds to the south. If you remember yesterday, yesterday was pretty breezy. We were pumping in all of that uh, humidity from the Gulf of Mexico, and that's why we're starting off our day with areas of patchy mist and some patchy fog. By about the afternoon, we will see peaks of sunshine, though, and we'll be looking at a high temperature this afternoon right around 82. It's going to be breezy this afternoon, too, with a few wind gusts of up to 20 miles an hour and then mild this evening. For all of those campers out there, it is going to be very mild. Not a chilly evening at all. Temperatures right near 70 degrees pretty much overnight. As we take a look at forecast highs today, hotter to the west where skies are going to clear quicker. So Del Rio, Eagle Pass, you'll be close to 90 degrees today. In San Antonio, low 80s, upper 70s in the Hill Country, Canyon Lake, Kerrville, areas like Pleasanton, low 80s for the high. And as I mentioned for tomorrow, for any kind of Easter egg hunts or events going on in the morning, if you're heading to mass in the morning, there's going to be areas of mist and cloud cover. But by noon, we'll be looking at some peaks of sunshine and it will be breezy in the afternoon. A lot of people have some picnics or grill outs in the afternoon tomorrow. You're going to really want to make sure those paper plates are anchored to the to the uh, table there because they could end up flying around with the breezy conditions. As we take a look at our weather setup across the nation, it is quiet around Texas. Some rain for the Great Lakes, but a big low pressure system. This is a prominent low and it is going to be bringing some winter weather to parts of the West, uh, even some flooding for Los Angeles, some fire danger for parts of New Mexico. What's our impact from this low? Not too much. We're going to see a front move through on Monday and Tuesday. That'll drop our morning lows into the 40s and bring in some drier air. Don't put up those jackets just yet. You'll want the morning lows. Uh, well, you'll want the morning. You'll want the morning uh, jackets because of those lows Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday in the 40s. Afternoons, though, in the 70s. And guys, we just got the pollen count in. There is a big reason for your sneezing, mm. and it is the oak. I will show you that pollen count coming up here within the next five to ten minutes. Yesterday, Justin Horn, poor guy, he was struggling uh, with his it gets, allergies. It gets the best of us. It right. is peak oak season in San Antonio. We'll look forward to that pollen count. Thank you, Sarah. Uh -huh. Thank you. Time now, 917, 66 degrees.
Okay, coming up, sorting through the hype. After the break, 12 on your side, it's Marilyn Moritz. We'll go through the different soda options, even the healthier ones. Oh, I love this. And we'll tell you which ones are worth the buy. And a look at your lotto numbers, your pick three, eight, two, five, fireball six, your daily four, zero, three, five, one, fireball two. Cash five, 12, 16. Oh, okay, let's go to Mega Millions. Someone won that big jackpot earlier this week is a billion, now it's back to like 25. Still, 25 million would be pretty good. 11, 30, 33, 38, 60, Mega Ball 16, Mega Plier 4, good luck. The industry calls these functional beverages, often containing ingredients once only found in supplements or herbal teas. It was important that it tasted good. Why not? What do I have to lose? If it works, then great. A lot of these cold drinks contain probiotics or prebiotics, like culture pop soda. Consumer Reports says the wild berries and lime has a blended sweet tart taste and no sugar substitutes. Healthier than actual soda, but... Drinks with added probiotics may not have the same health benefits as foods like yogurt or kimchi. Think of them as a shot of supplement in a drink form. They don't have the variety of bacteria or other healthful compounds that fermented foods do. What about green juices? They're an easy way to get some vitamins and minerals, but Keating says they shouldn't replace your veggies. Look for ones with vegetables high on the ingredients list. Suja Organic Cold Press Mighty Dozen with little fruit juice has 80 calories and 12 ounces. But look, the Naked Juice Green Machine with fruit juice listed at the top has 270 calories in 15 ounces. Drinks marketed as stress relievers like Recess Infused Sparkling Water Mood and Droplet Sparkling Self Care can make a tasty alcohol-free alternative to a cocktail. But Keating says it's not clear if their calming effects are really significant. And energy drinks, they've been around a while, but new ones like Aspire, Celsius, and Clean contain natural sources of caffeine. Chemically, though, there's no difference. Cheers. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. In a few weeks, homeowners in Bear County will get property tax bills in the mail. Before you cut a check, the city is offering workshops where you can learn how to slash your bill. The next property tax help session is today at Reagan High School at 10 a.m. You can go there and get information on which exemptions you qualify for. People will also get one-on-one -on -one time with a volunteer who will answer questions about your bill and help you fill out your exemption form. There will be another session on Monday and several after that. Garrett Berenger is our residential tax property person in the newsroom. I always ask him all the questions. So visit sanantonio.gov forward slash property tax help to get more information on future sessions. Just a reminder, you have until May 15th in Bear County to file your tax protest. And San Antonio Pets Alive will have reduced adoption fees today for dogs and puppies. Just $25 for an adoption fee during their Petco Love Adoption event from noon to 4 p.m. at Petco's Ingram location. That's located on 6001 Northwest Loop 410. So those fees usually range from $60 to $150. Dogs and puppies adopted from SAPA will go home spayed, neutered, microchip, up to date on all their vaccinations, heart warm and flea preventatives. For more information, just head to ksat.com. Do you have a, a dog or cat at home? Mm -hmm, a little Yorkie. Oh, you have a Yorkie. What's its name? Mia. Mia. So cute. I have two adopted dogs. Don't think I can take another one. But some adopted cats showed up on my porch, so. Oh. Also a cat owner, too. <laughs> I'm just, all I need is chickens. Oh. A whole farm. <laughs> All right, taking a live look outside with this. So this is a really cool event. This is at Woodlawn Park. They are warming up. They are stretching because they are going to have a run walk Easter egg hunt. So these kiddos are getting all warmed up. We're going to take a live look at that when we come back. Welcome back. It's 930 on this Saturday, March 30th. Happy Easter weekend tomorrow. I know a lot of people are going to be out at parks, but today people are already at parks because the city of San Antonio, they lift those curfews starting Thursday night in the city parks and it's a tradition here in San Antonio. So Sarah, I know that a lot of people are going to be outside and it's pretty yeah. muggy this morning. And not only is it muggy, but they have to deal with 
the oak. I'm sorry to do this, but oak is very high for the first time this season. It's in the very high category past 12,000 molds are present, but they're low. It's kind of a bystander to the oak yeah, and oak season. We're just now starting to get into the peak of oak season. We usually see it peak in early April, so this makes sense, right? We're right about here. Oh, hey, I popped up there on the screen. We're right about here uh, for the for the season, and so we're about to hit peak oak season. Oak is hot, very high, past 12,000, and we've also got some mugginess too. So as we look outside, cloud ceilings have started to lower. We've had some areas of patchy mist. It's been very hit or miss. Uh, 65 degrees outside, humidity at 87 percent relative humidity. And so as we look at your Easter weekend headlines, today will gradually be clearing, but the humidity is going to stick around. Tomorrow morning, the mist will be even more prominent out there. I, th I think so. So keep that in mind for your Easter morning plans. You will run into some areas of mist by the afternoon, though. It'll just simply be humid, warm and a little bit breezy. I've got your hour by hour forecast for your Easter Easter coming up in just a bit, Sarah. Sarah, thank you. New this morning, a man says he got caught in the crossfire during a shooting on the southeast side. Now police are trying to figure out what happened and who's responsible. Their investigation started just before two this morning on Goliad Road, not far from I-37 and Loop 410. Police say a man told them he was walking down the street when people in two separate vehicles started shooting at each other. He says one of the bullets hit him in the back. Then he ran to a nearby mobile home park to call for help. Police say they searched the area but couldn't find a crime scene or any shell casings. Police are also investigating a drive by shooting on the west side. Officers say just after two this morning, a man was walking up to a home on Stone Fence Road. That's near Highway 151 and Loop 1604. Okay, it's the number you're supposed to call during an emergency, 911, but who picks up? And did you know that you pay a fee for the service every time you pay your phone bill? KSET explains what happens when you call or text 911. San Antonio 911, this is Jennifer. Do you need police, fire, or EMS? My name is Jennifer Rodriguez. I am a communications call taker. I receive 911 calls and non-emergency calls. This is the Bear Metro Emergency Communication Center. Was he an older male, a younger male? Also known as a PSAP. It's a primary safety uh, answering point. Here, information is always changing. Calls filled with chaos and concern come in by the second. May I have a description of the vehicle? In this room are call takers for the Bear County Sheriff's Office and the San Antonio Police Department. People's lives initially depend on what we do here. When someone calls or texts 911, a call taker answers it and immediately asks. Do you need police, fire or EMS? If there is a fire or someone needs an ambulance. We don't ask any questions first. We get fire on the line immediately. The call is transferred to San Antonio Fire Department dispatchers who are located in this same room. Call takers like Jennifer stay on the line to see if police are needed. May I please have a good contact number for you? When an officer does need to respond, call takers get as much information as they can. The questions they ask are often similar, but what's on the other end can be wildly different. And some of those calls, they never forget. I encountered a call where this um, wife called. Her husband had um, just shot himself in the head. He had initially said he was going to do it. She was calling for help, for mental health. And while she was on the phone, you heard the gun go off. Um, you heard her scream. To hear what was going on in her screams, those things never never come out of your head. You can't help but feel the pain that the, the person who's calling is going through. But that pain comes with a purpose. A call taker's job is to put the info a caller gives them into what's called a key card and pass that call on to a San Antonio police dispatcher like Kristen Rodriguez. The dispatcher will read the key card and prioritize it, whether it be a code one, code two, code three response. It could be a robbery in progress, a shooting in progress, rape in progress. Those type of calls, of course, they're code three and they're our number one priority to get officers out there. Dispatchers work with calls that are divided according to SAPD substations. 
They dispatch officers that work out of those substations based on where the caller's emergency is located. Watch what happened during our interview. If there's an officer in that district or that section that can go to... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I got it, Raul. Anyone that can break away, any safe officers. It's a shooting with a hit. Said it's a 16-year-old male that was shot in the hand. There's a second call, daughter, 16-year-old boyfriend shot himself in the hand on purpose. All officers use caution. 10-4, I have you in route. You know, do I send, do I send two officers? Do I send three officers? The hardest part is knowing that you're in charge of all these lives and, you know, that one time you don't send cover could cost or potentially cost, you know, an officer's life. The call center is operated by Bear Metro. Despite the name, it is not a division of Bear County. It's the local 911 district. There are districts like that all across the state. Bear Metro's area includes Bear, Comal, and Guadalupe counties. And our primary job is to provide the resources necessary for the 911 system to work from the time a caller um, dials 911 to the time a call taker receives the call. Bear Metro provides the technology and the equipment. The 40 cities within the Bear Metro 911 district provide the call takers, the dispatchers, and the response. Your tax dollars pay for the work of your local police and fire departments, but a fee on your phone bill pays for the 911 technology used here. The 50 cent 911 fee that you see in your wireless bills are all wireless. Numbers have a 50 cent uh, 911 one fee that is um, collected by the state comptroller and then divided out accordingly. There's also a 50 cent fee applied to residential landlines and VoIP lines. That's when you use an internet connection to make calls. For business lines, the fee is $1. Bear Metro works with an annual budget of around $18 million. That provides the 911 technology for the 23 emergency communication centers across Bear, Guadalupe, and Comal counties. In San Antonio, there are two one on the north side and south side. They're redundant to each other, so if one, one facility goes down, we've got the other as a backup. If something catastrophic were to happen and both uh, facilities were down, as far as our phones or CAD systems, then we partner with Austin PD. And so they would take our overflow, they'd take our 911 calls. Someone has to be there to answer the call. For Jennifer, those calls have become her calling no matter what she finds on the other end. I've actually taken up knitting or, or crocheting and on my break or on my lunch, I'll take a walk outside and I, I know this is a religious talk, but I talk to God or I knit or I crochet and have blankets that I make here. You, you find ways to cope, but I wouldn't see myself doing anything else. I really wouldn't. Now you can check out all of our KSAT Explains coverage by scanning this QR code. It'll take you directly to our YouTube page. And if there's something you want explained, just let us know. On KSAT.com, just click on the KSAT Explains section under the Features tab. I love those stories Myra does. Oh, they're amazing. They're so good. Please check them all out. Okay, checking back in at Woodlawn Lake as this Easter weekend gets underway. This is a live look from our photojournalist Alexis. And you know, the kids are, they're warming up. They're getting, they're doing drill stuff. Yeah. Excuse me, tip. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the running and walking group is gearing up to start their Easter egg hunt. You know, they take this very seriously. We saw them warming up earlier. And all of this is hosted by the kids running and walking group, running down a dream. They're doing some exercises and just getting ready for this fun event today. Yeah, so it starts in five minutes and they're going to be running and walking along a trail, an area in Woodlawn Lake Park looking for those eggs. But I love the fitness aspect that goes with it. Okay, like you're going to run, you're going to walk and get your body moving and then you get a treat. <laughs> what a unique experience. But and I bet you they're going to have so much fun. Yeah, look at that teamwork. Teamwork. Thank you so much, Alexis, for bringing us this live look at the drill that are going on there. Yeah, now if you're looking for other places to egg hunt, you have plenty of options, starting with Chicken and Pickle, where an egg hunt will take place at 11 Sunday. The Tower of Americas will also host an Easter extravaganza beginning at 11 a.m. And St. Thomas Episcopal Church will have a hunt at 10 in the morning. You can find a full list of all the egg hunts happening around our city on our website, ksat.com.
Everyone have fun out there and be safe. It's 941 and 66 degrees. Up next, what Bandera County is doing to prepare for the thousands of people expected to travel and to experience the total solar eclipse. 66 degrees out there and we saw um, with that shot at, over at Woodlawn, it's, it looks muggy outside. It probably doesn't just feel it, it looks it too. Sarah Spivey is going to break down our Easter weekend forecast when we come back. Welcome back. A town built for 100 is expecting thousands during the eclipse weekend. So as we continue our countdown to the total eclipse here in South Central Texas, rural communities say they are running on overdrive to prepare. Our Avery Everett traveled to Bandera County, where leaders have spent the last three years preparing for the eclipse. This ambulance is loaded. Check pads. Even though it's fully stocked and staffed, it's still not enough. Overwhelming for rural EMS. With the total eclipse set to cross over South Central Texas next week, Bandera County leaders say they're worried. We just don't have anywhere near the staff to handle as many people as we're going to get, but we'll do it. In a rural community like Vanderpool, volunteer departments are on their own. So eight people, three ambulances, mm -hmm. and one helicopter. And one helicopter. And 10,000 people plus. County leaders say only about 100 people actually live in the town of Vanderpool. But during the eclipse weekend, they're expecting thousands of people to pack this place. I mean, just take a look at this RV park. It's obviously empty now, but owners here tell me that all of the reservations for these spots were booked months ago for the eclipse weekend. I'm preparing for not the worst, <laughs> but not the best, uh, just in between. There's only one gas station and one country store for miles in this part of Bandera County. And when we run out, we run out. They're buying extra supplies. Here and what's on the shelf, and then we've got another order coming in. As their strategy is to over prepare. We're a very small rural community with uh, limited resources. But uh, we pulled together and I think uh, we'll survive this. And now with one week left, they're asking visitors to do the same. Have water, have food, have extra supplies, have fuel. This community is preparing for the unknown. It's going to get real. But their shelves are stocked and departments are now on standby. We're going to do what we have to do when it happens and we'll handle it. We'll handle the situation when it comes. And it's not just preparations that the county is concerned about. It's also about what happens after the eclipse. They're expecting a lot of traffic Monday night into Tuesday morning when people are leaving Bandera County. They say if you are going to drive throughout this, be sure to drive slow and drive with patience. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Okay, we are counting down the days here at KSAT until the total solar eclipse. And we are your eclipse authority. Right now on KSAT.com, head to the Eclipse Authority tab for a list of events leading up to April 8th. So that's not this Monday, but next Monday. And you can check out the interactive map that shows a complete path of totality. Yes, and we are still too far out to give an accurate hour by hour cloud forecast. You really got to be within a day or two to give you an hour by hour cloud so forecast. So maybe next weekend. Yeah, I think okay. next weekend or even later on this week we'll have a better handle of what we can expect. There are some indications that we could have some morning clouds, but that's about all we can confidently say right now. We want to keep you updated and we will keep you updated on air online and of course on that weather app. Speaking of the weather app, there's been some areas of patchy mist out mm -hmm. there this morning. And in fact, I've uh, went ahead and circled the area on the authority radar where that patchy mist would be mainly up in north eastern Bear County and to Comal and parts of Kendall County as well. Closer to Canyon Lake, that's where we've got some areas of mist this morning. It is too fine to see uh, from the radar, and that's why I went ahead and circled those areas for you. So we're going to see some more morning mist tomorrow as well for Easter Sunday. But as for today, we'll be looking at gradually clearing skies, but the humidity is going to stick around. Here's a look at the satellite locked into cloud cover right now. There's some peaks of sunshine, though, down near Floresville already and so we will be looking at at least some afternoon sun. These clouds are going to be stubborn. Temperatures are in the mid 60s and it'll be a similar case tomorrow as well. But humidity has been on the rise. We've seen dew points change by some 5 to 15 degrees just within the last 
about uh, 24 hours or so and it's going to stay muggy all weekend long even higher humidity tomorrow and that's why I think morning mist is going to be a bit more prominent tomorrow morning than it is, is out there right now so keep that in mind for any Easter egg hunts or as you're heading to mass in the morning or church services in the morning know that there will be some areas of mist for your Easter as for today we're going to be looking at gradually clearing skies this afternoon 82 degrees for the high temperature this afternoon in San Antonio and it's going to be a very mild evening temperatures will be near 70 degrees by 9 and we're really not going to see temperatures too much cooler than that later on this evening, even past midnight. As we look at forecast highs today, warmer out to the west where there's going to be a little bit more sunshine. Del Rio Eagle Pass closer to 90 degrees. Around San Antonio, low 80s are a good bet. 83 in Castroville, 81 in Converse and at Stinson, 83 Poteet and Pleasanton, 82 in, Cur in Floresville rather. In Kerrville, it'll be in the upper 70s, upper 70s in Bernie Helotus and Bull Verde. Then as we head into Easter again, patchy fog and morning mist. Easter afternoon though will be just warm warm, humid and a little breezy as well. So as you take a look at your Easter Sunday forecast, morning mist around noon, still cloudy and only in the low 70s in the afternoon. Just a little bit of sun is going to be enough to warm us up into the low to mid 80s. South winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour, so a breezy Easter as well. Here's a look at those wind gusts by tonight up to 25 miles per hour during the day tomorrow. Wind gusts of up to 20, 25 miles per hour are possible, especially in the evening. Then as we head into next week, we are going to need those jackets still, especially in the morning. Take a look at morning lows in the 40s, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday morning, all because a weak front moves through that dries out our atmosphere. Ideally for the eclipse, we would have low humidity, but it looks like humidity is going to rise over the weekend next weekend, which is why we have the chance for some morning clouds on eclipse day. We will keep you posted. Go away, humidity. Yeah, stay away. Yeah, thank Thanks, you, Sarah. Sarah. Time now 951, 66 degrees. After the break, we'll tell you about the latest recalls that could be in your driveway, so make sure you stick around. A couple of major recalls to tell you about right now. First up, Kia has recalled more than 427,000 Telluride SUVs. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the SUV can roll away while in park. So all those vehicles made between 2020 and 2023 and certain 2024 models are affected by the recall. Owners are being asked to take the SUV to a Kia dealer to have an updated electronic parking brake software installed. Kia will reimburse you for the repair. Subaru is recalling nearly 120,000 Outback and Legacy vehicles over potential faulty airbag sensors that may not deploy during a crash. The recall involves the 2020 through 2022 model year, so if you have one of those vehicles, take it to the dealership. They'll replace those sensors for free. Time now, 955, 66 degrees. We'll be right back.